Hey friends of Keyclock, nice to see you again. This is Des Nico. And today I want to talk to you about what does it take to enforce your users to provide some data or to execute some action. In Keyclock it's called required actions and I'll show you what does it take to implement your own custom required action. When working with Keycloak, you probably know all the required actions. It's under um, the authentication menu and uh, the tab required actions. You can see the default required actions in Keycloak, like configuring OTP, accepting the terms and conditions, update the password. So you can force your user to um, execute this action. If you go to the users and show your users, I have a demo user of mine, you can um, select some required actions the user has to perform. Perhaps uh, update the password when the user is uh, authenticating. The next time uh, the user has to uh, update the password or verify its email address uh, so we can send an email to the user with a link and the user has to um, verify its email or whatever. And um, like nearly everything in Keycloak, you can also customize um, your, your required actions or implement your own custom required action. Um, for example, um, we take a um, required action to require the user to enter its mobile number. So you can use it um, for further processing with my um, SMS OTP um, authenticator and the link to this video you can find uh, in the upper right corner. And um, yeah, let's um, start digging into the code and see what it's needed. So to the IDE and um, just simply like any other SPI, we're starting with a factory method, a factory class, sorry. And we have to implement the required action factory for our factory. Um, class and uh, in this factory um, nothing special is, is needed and um, just remember this uh, display text update mobile number we will see this later when configuring and registering the um, required action and um, the factory method just returns a required action provider um, this is the interface and um, our implementation is the mobile number required action and we're implementing the required action provider. And uh, we have some logic in here. We can set an initiated action support. Um, if we set this initiated action support to support it, we can call this required action directly. Um, we are in a URL if we uh, really want to call it directly. And uh, we have the evaluate triggers method, which, be, uh, which will be evaluated every time a uh, user interacts or authenticates uh, with Keycloak. So um, in our case, this logic says um, if there's no uh, mobile number um, attribute in this user, um, just add this required action to the user. So the user has to provide a mobile number. Um, with this logic, you don't have to um, set the um, required action explicitly to the user, but it's um, um, uh, automatically seen when the user is authenticating, hey, this user doesn't have a mobile number and um, the required action is added automatically. And then we have uh, two methods, the required action challenge and the process action. And as usual, um, the first um, action, the required action challenge is just for um, the initial um, the initial um, form displaying or initial contact with the user. In our case, we're just presenting the user a form to enter its uh, mobile number. And then the process action is uh, the method uh, which is called when uh, the uh, user submits the form. And uh, we're getting uh, the actual user from the context, uh, getting the HTTP request and the form data from um, the request getting the mobile number from uh, our form data, do some validation. If the mobile number is invalid, we're just um, displaying an, an error message. And if everything is okay, we're um, storing the mobile number at the user's attributes and remove the required action from the user and then say contact success 
which means everything's okay, uh, required action um, has succeeded. Um, that's pretty the um, most of the code you have to, to enter in our case for the mobile number. And uh, as always, the um, link to the demo code, which is hosted on GitHub, is uh, you can find in the uh, description of this video. So you don't have to um, type everything from the screen. You can um, look it up on GitHub. So there's a private method for creating the form because we have this uh, two times in the, in the um, class in two different methods. So um, just to have um, no repetition in the uh, class. Okay, so that's um, the required action. And yeah, our, one thing I forgot, in our um, method to create the form, we have uh, at the end um, the form create form update mobile number FTL. And um, this FTL template, this free marker template is also um, delivered with the required action. And I put it to the resources, theme resources templates directory as usual for extensions, SPIs implementations. And this is just a custom form um, based on the Keycloak default forms uh, with default properties, um, classes, uh, whatever. And uh, for displaying um, the form to enter the user's mobile number. So when we have uh, all set up, uh, implemented everything and uh, built our SPI extension, uh, deploy it to Keycloak, then we can switch back um, to Keycloak and register the required action first. That's a thing we have to do. We have um, to register the required action before we can actually use it. And this is done in the um, upper right of our required actions tab register. We get a uh, select a drop down and we have here our update mobile number. This is the display text from the factory method. And uh, we have the update mobile number. We're just uh, selecting it, uh, hitting OK, and then it is automatically um, added to our required actions. It's enabled by default. We can disable, but um, we just want to use it now. And if we switch back to our users, we can see our user doesn't have any attributes there, no mobile number. And so let's see what happens if um, the user uh, authenticates just um, using the account console and now entering the user's credentials. And we can present it with a form uh, like we already saw what we implemented. Actually, update mobile phone number, hello, that's Nico, that's our username and please update your mobile phone number. Uh, we can now update um, a phone number. And if it's um, two less characters, too few characters, we're getting an error message because it's invalid. At least we have to enter um, five characters. That's what I provided in, um, the, in the method. And if we enter the correct value, we are redirected to a the application itself and can sign out here, go back to Keycloak. And we, when we um, call a user, we have an attribute mobile number with the actual um, value of the mobile number the user just has in, uh, entered. So this is all what it takes to um, enter or to create a custom required action for usage in Keycloak, implement the factory and the actual provider class um, package it, build it, package it, deploy it to Keycloak and register it in the required actions tab so you can use it. And depending on the logic you're implementing, it's automatically discovered to being executed when the user um, authenticates. And um, otherwise you can uh, always set it to the required um, user actions um, field, so the update mobile number, I can save it to the user. And um, now when the user authenticates, it will be executed again because we set it to the user explicitly. And we can do this, sign in, uh, our test user, there's Nico. And now there's Nico is uh, uh, enforced to 
provide or update the mobile number because there is already a mobile number in the profile. Um, we can display it here and okay, just saying the um, most recent number is uh, this one, can submit it and uh, we're done. And when we're back in Keycloak, we can see, of course, the mobile number is updated. I hope you liked the video and give me some thumbs up. Um, if you don't haven't already, subscribe to my channel, hit subscribe now, turn on the bell so you don't miss any of my other videos in future. And yeah, put it to the comments uh, what required actions, custom required actions do you use on your daily usage with Keycloak uh, key deployments. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.